let's judge these banned cards and see if they're worthy of being pulled off the list or not. Hey there everyone and welcome back to a series of videos where we take a look at Yu-Gi-Oh's TCG ban list and ban list and uh, discuss whether or not any of the cards can come off of it with or without erratas. Uh, so as per the usual, we'll take a look at last week's comments uh, from Tenebrae17. Uh, I think there might have been a com comment or two other, other than that. No, never mind. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the comments from last week. Uh, and to kick it off, uh, Tenebrae talked about Sprite Elf. Um, it can bring back Mascarina and enable Link Climbing. Uh, the Revive being quick effect make it particularly busted for Tier Elements. Yeah. Uh, the easy fix for Elf will make it Archetype. Re yeah. Honestly, I think that was one of those that I just completely forgot about Archetype rest uh, restricting. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. I, I just looked at it uh, being able to do a bunch of stuff. I was like, uh, no. Uh, uh, Sprite has multiple monster that needs to attribute for cost. Uh, for the retroactive effect, and Elf was largely meant to enable those bolster sprites. Yeah, I mean, if they were to bring it back, it would have to be over uh, an errata to do that. And I can see them bringing it one with the change if they did. Now that I, I think about it. <laughs> uh, next, uh, some more board of somberty. Somberty is probably fine unless there's another winged beast. Uh, I know they. I, I mentioned there being two main ones. One being uh, Avion, and that one is actually used primarily in flow nowadays and the other one being the statue of winds or whatever it was called the uh that the one that flow also utilized uh but since the statue of winds is uh banned at the moment uh there really isn't anything major that i can think of that Samorg bird of sovereignty can bring out that's completely busted um so yeah yeah it could uh, until they end up bringing out something that's about on par with uh the statue of winds yeah <laughs> uh issue with soul charge wasn't the effects it was getting materials i don't remember if i mentioned i think i did but I don't recall what I mentioned as far as like the change. Um, when it released at the end of Zexel, the game was pretty largely about flinging as many monsters into the grave. Uh, so I'll charge and bring up. Yeah, that's why I mentioned it was like, well, it's you get a lot out of it for very little. At that point, it was mostly fine until brains with links. Yeah, I I believe I did think about that too. There would be a definitely. I think the restriction would be you not being able to link. A, a good restriction would be link and at most synchro. Uh, due to like if you had multiple monsters with different levels, because that way overlaying wouldn't be as easy. But uh, using synchros and links are still just as fine for most monsters. So yeah. Uh, Smoke Grenade was a ticking time bomb that went off when Infernoble kept looping it. I did mention that. Uh, I forgot about the hard ones per turn when thinking about it because other decks could implement it. But yeah, that's a Good suggestion, honestly. So, yeah. Uh, and with that out of the way, uh, we'll take a look at...
today's cards. And to kick things off, let's go with the first monster, and that is Spiral Master Plan. So Spiral Master Plan is a seven level seven dark spellcaster effects monster. And her effect is once per turn, you can add one spiral mission card from your deck to your hand. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one spiral resort and one spiral monster from your deck to your hand, except spiral master plan. You can only use this effect of spiral master plan once per turn. So the spiral deck itself uh, actually implemented an archetype outside of its normal archetype, I believe, at least from what I researched, and that was Matt was um, Mage's Soul, I think, Magician Soul, Magician Souls, um, and Magician Souls was usually used uh, to send off the the spiral cards to be able to special summon it and go into the dark magicians mainly because spiral master master plan is a dark uh spellcaster and being able to do that so yeah uh could this card come back honestly uh I, if i remember correctly i did see a thread talking about this and to be honest, uh, Spiral being outed uh, for banning. I think there was another monster. I don't remember 100%. Um, but considering it got banned, uh, it actually just completely killed uh, the Spiral uh, archetype. You don't see it really at all uh, being played and everything else is just too underpowered. Uh, to run effectively. But uh, honestly, I can see it coming back at one at most, just so that, I don't know, maybe they can make new spiral support. So, yeah. Uh, and with that, let's take a look at uh, card number two for today. Which is Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom. It is a eight a level eight dark dragon fusion effect monster, and its requirements are two dark pendulum monsters. The effect is must be either fusion summoned or special summoned by tributing the above cards you control in which you do not use polymerization. Once per turn, you can target one other monster on the field or in the graveyard. Until the end phase, this card's name becomes that monster's original name and replace this effect with that monster's original effects. Also, for the rest of the turn, if your monster attacks a defense mo the position monster, Inflict piercing damage to your opponent. So, uh, Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom uh, was banned because it could do a first turn kill with Leary Lusk and with um, Pendulums, a uh, Pendulum deck. Uh, now, could this card come back? Honestly, it would have to be in like some back not a backwards. It would have to be like a full swing of pendulum decks again. And even then you would have to limit what it can do um beyond okay, just once per turn because um you can target any monster on the field. But regardless since Pendulums aren't that widely used in terms of a full deck 
I know there are some that have them in there. Um, I think Super Heavy is rarely played, but you can maybe see one of them floating around sometimes. Um, maybe, I don't know if there would be any change to it, but I can maybe see it coming back if there wasn't, like, something stupidly broken uh, for it to copy. But if not, I would say it they would have to drop the piercing def uh, damage pierce. So, yeah. Regardless, um, maybe. <laughs> maybe one. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's go into the next card, which is... Summon Sorceress. So Summon Sorceress is a Link 3 Dark Spellcaster Link Effect Monster. The requirements for her are two or more monsters with the same type except tokens. And the effect is, if this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon one monster from your hand in defense position. To your opponent's zone, this po card points to. You can target one face-up monster this card points to. Special summon one monster from your deck in defense position with the same type as that monster. To a zone this card points to, but negate its effects. You can only use this effect of summon sorcerers one per once per turn. So summon sorcerers. Seven Thethwith, Summon Sorcerers, <laughs> uh, was banned because of Pendulum FTK. Uh, yeah. Yay, another one that got banned because of Pendulums. Uh, could this card become, could this card come back? Uh, even this, even if this would come back, I don't know if it would be utilized too much, considering, considering, uh, pendulums aren't played nearly as much as I mentioned with, uh, Starving Venom. So, maybe the other reason why it got banned is because you can just bring a card straight out of the deck, like, uh, old, the original version of... Sand Gan and Witch of the Black Forest, I believe it was. Yeah, it was that one. For some reason, I'm all, I almost confused her for uh, Goddess of the Third Eye. But yeah, honestly, I don't. Unless they bring back more Pendulum monsters, I don't see her being played as much. If she were to be put back into the game, and at most, one. So, yeah. Uh, anyways. Well, beyond that, I don't know if she is technically part of, uh, Archetype. If they were, if it was, it'd be, uh, arch uh, type restricted to spellcasters. So, yeah. But regardless, maybe one. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the last card for today, which is... Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow. You know, it actually reminds me of an old, cart uh, old TV show. Super, Super Heavy Samurai Cyber Squad. By close proximity of the name. So anyways, uh, Samurai Scarecrow is a Link 1 Earth Machine Link Effect Monster, which requires one super heavy Samurai Monster. And its effect is, cannot be used as Link material. While you have no spell or trap cards in your graveyard, you take no battle damage 
from attacks involving this card. If you have no spell or trap cards in your graveyard, you can discard one monster, then target one super heavy samurai monster in your graveyard. Special summon it to the, your zone this card points to in defense position. You can only use this effect of Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow once per turn. Anyways, uh, so this card was used to make an unbreakable board for just one card. And you can actually just bring that card right back. Um, and last year, it, the deck itself with Scarecrow was the second strongest. So, oh, in the past year, there have been so many other decks that I think could out Scarecrow, but for the incredibly minimalist amount of resources, yeah, resources, I think. This one could come back, but it has to have the errata where the card that gets brought out uh, has its effects negated and cannot be used for links. Now, I know Scarecrow itself cannot be used for link material, so having one extra dead card on the field um, would make the uh, player actually you have to think outside of the box. So yeah. If it were to have that errata, maybe one. But it's just... I'm just... Shibon. I I'm just throwing ideas out. So yeah. Anyways, uh, with that said, there's one last thing I wanted to talk about, and that is the Reign of Dragon Roller. Now, between... Uh, last week's video and this week, I did watch a video about Dragon Ruler, and it actually described it rather decently. And what I saw, the person that I watched it from was, oh, D Z or D E D. It's pronounced it's spelled. Well, I'll just link the video. D Z. Uh, so yes. Uh, the reason that it got a bunch of cards banned along with itself is that when it came out, they were, I think, if I'm correct, it was either the first or one of the first uh, archetypes to have a once-per-turn effect. But it didn't matter the decks, deck or decks that ran Dragon Ruler were incredibly strong. And thus, not only were the cards that we mentioned, we talked about, uh, banned, but also the Dragon Rulers themselves. Uh, however, over time, they were unbanned and limited to one outside of Dragon Ruler of Ocean, I believe, which in Master Duel, all of them have been unbanned, or just not banned at all. Uh, and there is no problems with Dragon Ruler of Ocean. So, yeah. I don't know why they still have that one banned, but whatever. Anyways, with that said, uh, that is going to do it for me this week. And until next time, everybody. Goodbye. It's time to do-